Hi and welcome to another episode of The Canary Room, episode 10 of season 3 and the, the debut, I think, of the new check shirt. Uh, I know there's a number of my friends who like to uh, admire the um, the dress sense of me in The Canary Room and uh, I built something of a, a, an unwanted reputation for my check shirt. So, Mr. Larkin, this one is especially for you. Um, coming up on the show today, uh, we've had a couple of epic episodes of the show over the last uh, couple of um, editions. I, I, you know, I was relatively nervous about that, relatively nervous about uh, how well they'd go that down, whether they would, uh, you know, retain people's interests and and they seem to have done and um, we've got another action-packed show today uh, for you before we start I've got a, a number of thank yous and um, first thank you is to uh, a gentleman by the name of Shane Evans of direct bird products uh, you will find them on Facebook Shane contacted me um, four or five weeks back now I think and uh, and asked if he could um, donate some products to the show by way of uh, a, a sort of a, a donation um, and has sent through, as you'll see here, it, it was like Christmas Day to me. Uh, so I opened up a box of, um, of, of products that Shane had sent for the breeding season. Uh, there was perches, dummy eggs, nest pans, nesting material, you know, a whole variety of different things. And I'm, I'm really, really, really grateful for that. So thanks very much, Shane. They are already in good use in the Canary Room, which is great. So. If you're looking for stuff this season, check out Shane on Facebook. Um, I must say thank you to uh, to those of you who very kindly and very generously donated to the show. Um, I think most of you know one of the names I'm going to say. Uh, it's his, of course, Michael Burling. Michael, thanks very much, mate. I, uh, I, I you know, appreciate all of your generosity. Um, uh, Michael has, has, has contributed to every single show um, this year, so a, a real special mention to, to Michael. To another man who has made a number of contributions is Robert Elkin. Uh, Rob, appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, indeed, very, very, very kind of you. I must also say thank you to Brian Le Hooray. Le Hooray? Sorry about the pronunciation, Brian. Uh, but thanks very much. Your generosity was, uh, was incredible as well. So... Um, Thanks very much for that. If you are able to, donate button is uh, is in the top of our YouTube channel. Uh, and the money that's donated to the show um, I use to buy uh, new equipment, new camera equipment, uh, and pay for licenses for the editing software. So it's all reinvested back in um, to bring the show to you. So today's show, well, it is action-packed. Uh, highs and lows, lows and lows and depths of low um, been a very strange couple of weeks in the canary room uh, since we were last here um, we've got uh, a number of things today we've got the return of of the red pole diaries I, I gave the red pole diaries absolutely the kiss of death last time round when i said that you know everything was going well <laughs> well not anymore uh, so we'll catch up on that later on um, we've got the garden birds um, the garden birds this week have got uh, some lovely footage of a dunnock, uh, a couple of dunnocks actually, but but before we come to that, the first time in 30 years I've seen a wild green finch in the garden. Um, uh, so c caught that on film, you know, ran around like a complete madman trying to catch that and it, it was there for the day, it came back three or four times, so I've got some lovely footage and of course we've got the return of the goldfinches as well. Um, people are really enjoying the goldfinches on the feeder. Um, we are going on the road today. Uh, now we're going on the road virtually because the UK, though we've eased some of our lockdowns, uh, we are still in in, in lockdown. Um, I am I am indebted to to our on the road contributor this week. Um, I first uh, met him virtually. Um, through uh, the Facebook page which he, he helps run which is um, Natives and Norwich um, and he is uh, a gentleman who online at least on Facebook at least goes by the name of Mac Finch uh, he is of course gold medal winning Paul Gilchrist and today um, Paul has uh, been in communication with me for, for about six to eight weeks or so and has filmed his canary room of some stunning Norwich 
Um, so we, we kind of get not just one visit to Paul's room, but we get, you know, several months worth of content. So I'm indebted to Paul for that. And, um, you know, I, I only hope I can do justice to Paul's, uh, the quality of Paul's Norwich Canaries. Um, we've got some top tips from Paul as well in the show today. And we've got a full... A full question time. So thanks to everybody who has uh, contributed. Um, as I say, grab yourself a cuppa, sit back, and as always, enjoy the show. One of the features uh, that was um, it seemed particularly enjoyed last time out was the uh, the tracking of the days in the life of the um, the nest of blues without a blue, um, and uh, and so I'm happy to to continue that today and um, we pick the birds up on day 13 um, and as we can see there uh, you know very evidently there's no blues in this nest um, and as we go through to day 14 and to day 15 we can see the birds really sort of coming together now i had to change the the camera angle uh, because i could no longer bring the nest out because I was uh, concerned that the chicks would jump the nest and it would be slightly too um, early for them to do so. Um, they were, um, you know, developing really nicely and the hen in there, a variegated buff hen, which is a foster hen, um, you know, she's done a fantastic job of rearing those birds. So, um, we can see as they get today, so the 16 and 17, they start to venture onto the edge of the nest and then 18, 19 and, and, and 20 days, they're making their sort of formative visits out uh, and starting to show a, you know, a little bit of nice shape. There's a clear in here, um, which, uh, you know, I really quite like the look of. I've caught it a couple of times. Now, you know, one of the things when birds are coming out the nest, you know, a lot of them will look good. Um, it, very often it's too early to sort of tell you know what they're going to end up like uh, but you can you can you know get a good look at them anyway and, and enjoy them um, and one of the things for me is always particularly where you've got um, sort of variegated birds is to see the different variegation and the patterns of that um, whilst it doesn't influence the uh, the you know the overall showability of a bird um, a really attractive variegated is, is something nice to look at so I uh, I always enjoy the variegated and the heavily variegated coming out um, We'll take the filming of these right up to day 24 in this episode. And then what I will do is a special uh, Canary Room episode, sort of one to uh, day one to day 31 uh, of these birds. Um, and I'll put that on our YouTube channel so you can see the evolution of them day by day. Um, in the week, uh, well, this um, this arrived, which is the... Uh, the Five Fancy Federation inaugural journal, and um, I, uh, you know, I've really enjoyed this. Put together by the uh, Federation secretary, it's got all the results and class wins from from last year. There's, uh, you know, a number of articles in there from fanciers. There's. Uh, there's an article on yours truly as well, which I skipped past. Um, but I really enjoyed it. It's a really good read if you, uh, you go on Facebook and look at the Five Federation page. Uh, I think they've done a reprint of it, so uh, you should be able to, to obtain a copy regardless of where you're watching um, this show in the world. So, you know, one of the stories of our blues was... Um, was well there was no blues in that nest and you'll remember in the last episode we had a, a hen uh, a clear hen who we'd run the blue cock with uh, much to her uh, dissatisfaction um, and she hatched uh, well whilst the episode was running she just hatched the one chick uh, she hatched a, uh, another chick later that day and the agat mosaics also hatched another chick later that day so although they'd had four or five uh, full eggs they'd only hatched two um, I, I avoided temptation to sort of to put them together. Uh, I, I'd known from previous years that that hen uh, was a relatively good feeder, so I thought I'd, I'd, I'd leave it and, and see how we got on. Um, and so I left her, and, uh, and as you can see from the shot here, there is a, uh, a variegated white in the nest. So we'll keep everything crossed that fledges. It has been wrong. Um, the, the second nest of the blues, uh, well, they were under the um, the variegated yellow hen, so they're the same way bred as the first nest 
without a blue that we've seen. Um, and there is four chicks in there. They've also been rung. And we can see from the footage here that there is two allied to whites in there. So there looks like there's a clear white uh, and then there's a variegated white in there. So very early still. Um, and, you know, we've, we've had a challenging couple of weeks in the canary room, so we won't count our chicks or chickens just yet um, with those. But a couple of allies in there, which is nice to see. And finally, with the blues, we ran the blue cock with a, a self-green buff hen. Um, she's laid now. She's laid uh, four eggs. Uh, I've popped a clear egg in there as well from one of the clear yellow hens. Uh, so she's sitting on five eggs. So they've only just been set in the last couple of days so won't check them yet um so so fingers crossed you know the blues is very much the formation of a line this this time around this year so it's year one for them um which is uh, you know which is so far so good you know get a couple of allies out of it that's what i'm looking for um i'll look to look to retain probably one or two um allies i'll look to retain the father as well um, and then start to really develop that line as we move ahead uh, in the in the coming years. So still very much year one for that line, as it is for our cinnamon line. So uh, let's catch up with those pesky little fellows now. So also in year one was our uh, was our cinnamon line. Um, on the last episode, you know that we uh, we lost the only visual cinnamon hen that we had. Uh, although we we did keep her um, three chicks, we've got four visual chicks off her all together. Um, what we we did though, there was some comfort in that we got uh, three full eggs off her. Um, we put those under a clear five. Um, do you know what? It's it's one of those things with the cinnamons this year. Um, they uh, those eggs uh, didn't hatch. The um, they were full. They just didn't develop properly. So clearly, whatever had affected the hen, uh, had affected the the embryos in the eggs. And so um, they were uh, they were jettisoned from the from the nest by the hen. Uh, the eggs were so. What that meant really was. Um, was, was sort of back to the drawing board. We had uh, a white hen down and, and we'd seen the cinnamon cock feeding her. Uh, so had some high hopes there. Um, and a variegated yellow, uh, sorry, a variegated buff um, who'd, uh, who'd also um, got a couple of eggs she'd laid and we'd added a couple of eggs from, a, from cage nine, a clear to her as well to make a clutch of four up. Uh, only um, three of those four eggs are, are full. Um, so don't know yet uh, what what's going to come out. Um, they are due to hatch in, in four or five days, I think. So we'll know better then. The white, despite the fact she'd been fed by the cinnamon, nothing in them. Um, now I've left her sitting uh, because I've got a number of hens that are um, that are sitting at the moment. Um, and I might need to move, move a few things around. Um, you will remember we've had some degree of uh, success. So the variegated buff hen behind me, uh, who's, um, who's uh, reared the nest uh, from the blue cock, um, I'd said quite confidently, actually, uh, and I watched the episode back and chuckled to myself. I said quite confidently, you know, we'll, we'll let her rear these eggs and, uh, and then next time round, you know, she'll... Um, she'll be all right, she'll, she'll mate. And, and then when that's turned out to be the case, so the cinnamon cock has mated her um, a, a get off camera while we were, we were in the show, filming the show today, uh, but prior to that as well. Um, so he's mated her a few times now. Um, so she's just starting to build up a nest, the, the younger about 25 days at the moment. So they'll be moved away. They are picking up, but she's still feeding them. So no rush to move them, but I will start to move them as she builds her, her next nest in earnest. And, and hopefully, uh, we'll certainly we'll get some more birds off the cinnamon cock, which will be um, will be really important for us for the development of that line. At the moment, you know, I've only got one. Uh, I've got nests uh, off one hen. So really, to, you know, to develop that line properly, I want nests off at least two hens. You know, I will go again with the white, um, but as I say, for now, I'm just gonna let her sit. So 
mixed as always with the cines um, but uh, reminded myself in the week this is year one and uh, and you know I talk a lot about patience in the show um, and patience is, is one of the attributes that we need as a bird keeper and um, you know, I was never gonna. I was never gonna achieve everything in year one with the cinnamons. Um, what I want to breed is some some quality. Um, I want to breed some sufficient numbers so I can really kickstart that line. So year one, and I've reminded myself of that and, and made myself feel uh, slightly less that I've failed uh, with the cinnamons. So that wraps up our, our sort of blue and cinnamon lines for now. Um, we will, of course, continue to follow them um, over the next few weeks. Uh, Hopefully next time we're here, the, the blue cox chicks uh, with the dark buff hen will be out. Um, and I've got some decisions about where I run him next. Uh, and hopefully we'll have some good news. Um, hopefully the, uh, the variegated buff will have laid and hopefully we'll have some good news on, on her eggs as well. So we'll keep all of those things crossed. It's a very different story in the garden where, despite the fact it's been relatively blowy for the last few days, um, the wild birds are uh, are really, really enjoying themselves. So it's time to go out in the garden. And um, I managed to catch the the garden birds on a long lens. And, uh, and if you could hear the audio to it, you would howl laughing. Um, so the first shot we've got is a, uh, a pair of dunnocks, so it starts with one dunnock, um, bathing uh, in the, um, in the, the, the guttering of the, uh, the garage, which is right next to the canary room and has potential to be a bigger canary room in future. Um, so first shot there and, uh, and a real joy to watch and I'm sort of, I'm shouting at the kids. We're all having, uh, we're all sat at the table actually at the time that we're having breakfast and uh, I'm sort of saying, stop moving the table, you're, you're moving the camera. Um, which went down really well with Claire, as you can imagine. Uh, and so we've got some really, really nice shots of the dunnocks and then, as I mentioned on the intro to the show, um, this this little fellow arrived and I saw him in the tree. Um, and I, 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 I initially I thought it was a chaffinch. Um, I thought it's not a goldfinch. It's, it, it, it's 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 too big to be a goldfinch. And I didn't really have my glasses on, and you know the the the, the window from the, uh, the the dining room is about thirty foot away. Um, so uh, I set the camera up hurriedly and caught this guy uh, on film and um, what an absolute delight to see a green finch in the wild the, the colour um, you know the, the sort of the, the, the position the beak everything about it just stunning absolutely stunning and um, I really really you know really delighted to capture this bird And then, of course, we had a return of the goldfinches. Um, I, I never get tired of seeing these birds in the garden. Uh, and I know from the feedback that you give the show, neither do you. Um, absolutely beautiful things, you know, go gorgeously feeding. So, uh, you know, another first this week in the... Um in the, yeah, in the in the canary room garden um, catching a green finch so god alone knows what we'll what we'll manage to follow that with in future episodes so um, from the uh, the native finches in the garden to the native finches in the bird room <laughs> it's time for the red pole diaries it 
it's fair to say of all the birds that we have in the canary room, the, the natives, um, the red poles that we've got, the pethro goldfinches, and the, the Siberian goldfinches are, um, you know, perhaps the most challenging. Uh, and um, it's been a relatively good season with the canaries so far. Um, you know, we've seen some uh, some nice birds out the nest. We've seen some some numbers, and and we've had, you know, moderately speaking, uh, very few uh, sort of fatalities. Um, different picture with the. Uh, with the native birds, you'll know. Last time we we set a nest of um, of eggs from the the silver red pole, and you know one of the one of the challenges that you've got with native finches is you know f first thing is you've got to get them to nest. Second challenge is you've got to get the um, the eggs full. Uh, so we, we we crossed both of those hurdles with the the silver pole and the, and the normal cock and and they would breed everything basically cocks and hens would be split silver which you know is ideal really for future years um and then uh, and the third hurdle is, is is the chicks hatching and we cross that hurdle too uh, I put um, pinkies in the egg food, um, I gave them some live food, you know, I, I made sure that there was a real selection for them. Um, mother dutifully sitting on the nest, father, um, you know, not really interfering, which was great. Um, within 24 hours, one of the young, uh, unfortunately, had perished uh, in the nest. Within 48 hours, the other two had, had, had followed suit. And, and on closer inspection, um, both birds, or all three young, had black spot. Um, now, it's the hen I bought in. Uh, not saying it's the hen. Could well be the cock. Cock are bred last year. Um, so that can happen sometimes first round. And then sort of second round, once they've got the grog through them, um, it, it can... It can uh, you know it can subside so i put them back again together and uh, i put nesting material in and we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens with them um to be honest with you a uh, bit more positive is the um one of the pied red poles uh, pied hen with uh, with a normal cock now that normal cock um fathered uh, my three young last year so i know he fills eggs and and he was, uh, you know, I'm going to regret saying this just before I say it. I can tell I'm going to regret it. Touch wood. Um, you know, he was uh, he was hands on in, in the, the feeding of those young last year. So um, she's laid uh, five eggs now. Anything that's bred out of this pair will be split for pied. There won't be any visual pieds. But again, that's not a real issue for me. Um, what you, you may or may not be able to see is we've got an empty cage. Um, and you know it was um, we've had a, a real windy day and night and next door had, uh, had, had done a bit of work in the garden they'd, um, they'd taken some trees down um, and I don't know whether I, I, I just can't put my finger on what it was but within quick succession both the, uh, the pied cock and the split pied hen as you can see here um, I lost them both and, and I was absolutely devastated. Um, it's been it's been a real challenge with the par, uh, the poles as we know and, and you know I, I'm a I'm a, a passionate bird keeper. You know, I, I give them um, they've got clean, good clean cages, they've got plenty of room, the best quality food that you know you, that I can I can buy. Um, so it's 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 been a real frustration and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna give up with the poles. I'm, I'm not ready to give up with the poles yet. But um, the the challenge I have is that the the stud of poles I've got now are are old and and they are aging. And this is probably uh, certainly for for the pair in there. It's probably their last year. They're on blue rings, so um, I think by my calculations that makes them three year old this year. And um, the silver pole isn't. She's she's a last year's bird. And, the young cock she's with is a last year's bird. I think I've got a um, maybe a red ring bird in here as well somewhere. So th there's one or two, but um, the challenge is going to be with the poles. You know, I either uh, go back and see my friend Alan and uh, and reinvest in, in in some more birds, um, or I I cut my losses with them. 
um, and they're such beautiful birds. I can't bear to bear to think of of sort of not having red poles uh, in the canary room. So we'll see. There, there's no decision to make now. Um, so you know, I'm not going to make that decision in haste. And and if I can get, um, you know, I've got four hens now. If I can get half a dozen poles on the sticks by the end of the season, then that'll give me just you know the impetus and the. Um, and the, the the sort of the blood more than anything else, the stock to be able to carry that on. Um, slightly different picture with the uh, with the goldfinches. The the native goldfinches at the top are now in tip top breeding condition. They have been picking up. They've not built a nest as yet, but they have been picking up. The uh, the cock was singing, um, switting loudly yesterday. Um, the uh, you'll remember the the Siberians were. Um, we're on. Um, she laid. Uh, she laid five eggs, uh, and I took them all away. And then on the fifth egg, I, I made a, a schoolboy error. Um, it's first year with the Siberians, and uh, and it was an error. Um, and I, so I'm quite happy to share it with you as an error. Um, I took the cock away and I put him with the other Siberian hen. Now that just took the hen off the boil completely. She she laid a sixth egg, but she laid it off the perch, and. Uh, and that was obviously very frustrating. Um, so I, I left him with the other hen for um, for some time, and he was singing to that hen. And but the first hen was just not, you know, just not going to nest. She wasn't going to sit. So in the end, I um, I set her eggs under one of the five hens. And um, just yesterday, so he'd been out for about ten days, two weeks. Just yesterday, I put him back in. I, I replaced all the nests. I put a second nest site in there with uh, one of the nest pans that I got from very kindly from Shane. Um, so I put those in, and, uh, and they mated straight away, which is a you know really good sign. So there's obviously a pair bond between them. I'm nervous about leaving her with eggs because I've heard that goldies can be, um, you know, particularly uh, goldie cocks can be particularly destructive with eggs. So what I uh, may do this time is hang him on a cage on the outside as I did earlier in the season. So that's right by one of the, well, both of the nest pans so she'll be able to see him. So we'll give that a go. What it may mean is the second goldie hen, she hasn't built a nest or anything yet. We might just have to, you know, leave her for now um and uh, and see how we you know we get on maybe even later in the season if we if, if we can get this hen down again i'm trying to time things uh, you know it's not ideal to have her under the gold under a, a, a fife um although i do know a lot of people who will use canaries to re rear the birds and um, what i am pleased to say is there's five eggs under there i checked them and um at least three of them were full. Now I say at least three. I lost my bottle um, when I was checking them. So I sort of checked the first one and that didn't look full. I'm a little bit downhearted. And then I started to check the rest of them. At, at sort of They'd been set for about four or five days and, and I could see the veins developing. Uh, and I, I sort of checked one and I could see it and I checked another one and I could see the veins. I checked the third and I, was, I could see you know, the early onset of the, of the embryo developing. And the fourth one, I just, I was shaking that much. I just couldn't pick it up because I was fearful that I was going to drop it. Um, which, let's face it, after all that heartache is not what you want to be doing, is it? So, um, mixed picture, as always. They're back on form, the Red Bulls, you know. For a moment there, they'd lulled us into a false sense of security, like this was all going to be a walk in the park. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we... Uh, We'll see how we get on with them. Hopefully, uh, next time we're in the Canary Room, we'll have some Siberian chicks to uh, to talk about fingers and toes crossed. It's uh, an on the road this week with a difference. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'd uh, through the Natives and Norwich Facebook page, I'd. Um, I'd admired the birds of, uh, well, his online persona was Mac Finch, but Paul Gilchrist. I'd, uh, I'd admired his birds, and uh, I'd made contact with him um, to to see whether or not that uh, 
you know, Paul could accommodate us with a visit from the Canary Room. Um, very fond of the Norwich as a bird, uh, and Paul's got some outstanding specimens. He is um, uh, a world champion gold medal winner at the World Show. Um, with his Norwich, so uh, I'd wanted to go there, down there. Of course, lockdown has made that um, impossible. Um, so Paul set about filming his birds for us over a say six to eight week period, uh, and I'd like to share that um, that footage uh, and really Paul's story with you now. Um, so one of the first things you'll see as we just. You know, we navigate through some of Paul's outstanding birds is that, you know, there is real strength across all of um, the colours of Norwich. So he's got some outstanding clear um, and variegated birds. Um, the allied to white and, you know, I've got a soft spot to the allied to white birds. And, and Paul's got some, uh, some stunning white Norwich. Um, uh, an allied variegated white Norwich um, and then something that you you know you don't often see I mean we, we've seen in the canary room our challenges with building a cinnamon line so a to, to breed cinnamon birds but to breed cinnamon birds of of a real quality is is, is true stockmanship um, you know in uh, and, and what what Paul's managed to achieve here from a, a cinnamon carrying cock is is this hen this um, cinnamon buff hen who, who's just an exceptionally quality bird stunning head on it stunning top end um, so that's to, to real credit to him so as we you know we take a, a look at at, um, at Paul's birds um, you can see that you know that this is this is a this is a, a, a real stockman here this is a man who who understands you know what he wants to, to put in his birds and what he what he breeds in them um, we take a quick look around Paul's room and we can see that there's a, um, you know, a mixture of cage configurations. So there's, uh, the Norwich are housed in sort of the, the more traditional, um, you know, big uh, box-like cages like we have in the Canary Room. Um, and some of the other birds are housed in, in wire cages. One of the things which is evident is the, the flooding of natural daylight um, into Paul's bird room. Uh, and, and that's obviously helping bring the birds into um, into condition. Um, Paul's had his Norwich um, actually for for uh, about 11 years now. I think he got his first birds in 2009 when we were talking. He, he mentioned, um, you know, he's a, he's a, a real bird man. Uh, he's uh, he's had all kinds of birds um, and other animals. Um, and so, you know, whatever he's kept, he, he, he's always tried to, to breed. He, he had Irish fancy um, initially. Um, and, and the attraction to Norwich was, um, was, was muling to start with. And, you know, something that, that I, can, I can relate to here. Um, and, you know, Paul did very, very well um, early on. Uh, you know, had a, a collection of natives, uh, red poles like we have here, although Paul had far greater success with them than I've done. Um, and a linnet cock that Paul uh, is very fond of, which he bred some outstanding Norwich linnet mules from um and uh, and so 2009 is when he got his first Norwich and and really um he bred 10 in the first year and uh, and one of them was um was of you know real good quality and, and he showed it and it, and it won and, and that really that really sparked his his enthusiasm for the bird. It's interesting talking to Paul because, like many stockmen, um, it's the the thrill of developing the bird to the model, which is the real attraction to bird keeping for him. And although he has shown and, and had some real successes on the show bench over the years, it isn't his primary focus. And um, that's to be you know. Re respected when you've uh, you've achieved what what Paul has achieved. Um, when we look around his room, what you'll notice is that um, he also keeps, as I do, mosaics. Uh, now, although I've got the agat mosaics, Paul's got red and yellow mosaics. Um, and, and as well as being very nice looking birds, that's part of the reason that the agats are in, you know, they're particularly appealing for me. They, um, so he always tries to breed a few 
um, early on and, and this year's been no different he's had some real successes with them but what he does is he uses them then to rear his um, his Norwich um, and we can see some of the footage he shared here he, he's got a it's an interesting one he's got a Norwich cock with a um, with a hen uh, a, a, a mosaic hen and, and the cock is pumping the babies full of food which is you know beautiful sight and one that we see here in the canary room with our with our borders and um, you know what what Paul shared with us is, you know, some of the very, very early, early breeding things. And you can see that he's got real successful breeding going on here in, 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 the, in the room. And then um, the birds sitting and then the, the young Norwich starting to hatch. Um, and then as he close rings them. Uh, as, as they're there you can you can start to see you know good good numbers of nests as well you know good three threes and fours in nests which is um you know which is testament to 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 the skill um he's uh, he's running with about 20 hens um and you know what what he says and we experience in here you know not all of them will work for you uh, and what i found with paul which was really lovely is you know there's a real um, real honesty, real modesty as well, uh, real modesty from the man and, and a real honesty um, from him as, as we, we chatted. Um, his, uh, you know, he, he was looking at, I, I, I talked to him about the, the, the white ground birds and, and that's just because I'm, I'm sort of um, you know, I'm fascinated by them, and, and I'd asked him whether, you know, he'd, he'd sort of he'd set out to, to breed whites, and 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 you know, as, as you can imagine, um, when anyone asks me a question about fifes and colours, that uh, you know, Paul's response was pretty much no. I breed, no, I, I aim to be breed good ones, irregardless of their colour. You know, I, I like to keep across the colours, and I think perhaps my sort of youthful naivety came to the fore then. And uh, and he really does, you know, when you when you look at the birds that Paul's got, there is a real quality. Um, across there he does keep dark norwich as well and um, but it's only his third year working with cinnamons um, and as i say we've seen that um that that cinnamon hen a real stunning bird um, and paul uses greens and you know we'll, we'll talk about as many fancies do putting a drop of green in uh, into to improve the 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 color we've got some top tips coming up from from paul um, a little bit later on as well in the show but as i as i you know we, we look around the room we see the young birds there and um, We'll look at some of Paul's native birds that he's, he's, he's bred and he's owned over the years. Um, he's shown and, and, and sold and others have shown. And, and, and he's had, um, you know, real, real success in there. There's miniature mules, miniature goldfinch mules with Irish. There's the, the, um, the, the linnet mule that we discussed and, 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 you know, the linnet cock, which bred some stunning mules for him over the time. And... Um, Real fascinating to look at, I think, the, the mules. It's a side, I, I mentioned it, I think, in the last episode, a side where, you know, I've got some cages which would kind of set up to do muling. So um, so we'll we'll see how we, we get on. And um, Paul has very kindly invited me and the Canary Room. In fact, I think probably I invited myself uh, to, to go over and, and film a, a, a full-length show um, and I think it would only be fair and it would only do him justice and his birds justice if we did that when it's safe to do so. Um, I know he was um, he was sort of uh, disappointed that we couldn't do it now, but, um, you know, has, has really committed uh, some time and effort and energy uh, in, into this for you. So um, it's time for, for some of Paul's uh, words of wisdom and top tips. So Paul's first top tip is, um, I think it sort of really epitomizes his modesty. Um, and, you know, and that's, that's to great credit to him, uh, which is uh, you'll never master this game. We're always learning off each other. And I think, you know, there's, there's, a real, there's a real genuine sentiment in that. 
And I think if we understand that that's the case, that we will never master it. You know, we aren't experts. I think I get a lot of it, uh, contact through um, from from people, you know, asking for advice. And, and, and my advice is based on my experiences. It's not based on any academic qualification. It's just based on keeping birds for, for a period of 30 years or more. Um, Norwich are not the um, the easiest birds to breed, Paul says. So, actually getting them fit before the breeding season is is really key. And Paul's natural light in his bird room is flooded with natural light, um, and flight cages as plays part of that. Um, Paul finds when first introducing the cock to a hen and trying to get them to tread, um, get the hen on the floor of the cage even if you have to take the perches out which is fascinating i've seen in here and i know um a few times that you know some really good matings on the floor um, and they've been the successful ones um, and paul points out that you know they seem to do a better job when they try and um, they're on the perches they're a big heavy feathered bird so if you have got norwich and certainly next year when we give the, the norwich another go in the canary room i'll i'll use that tip so I'll look to take the perches out. Paul talks about uh, about peas um, with great passion. Uh, uh, and I use peas in, in the canary room and we can see here uh, his, one of Paul's uh, egg food mixtures that he, that, he, that he gives his birds. A real fan of the benefits of peas. Uh, so peas it is. Um, but as I say, petit pois I give to the canaries in here as well, so I would uh, I would do that. So those are just some of Paul's top tips. Um, the final one is Natives and Norwich, uh, the Facebook page. We've mentioned it a couple of times. It is a a, a lovely, really nice bunch of guys that you'll find on there. Um, so my thanks to Paul, or his online and his online persona, Mac Finch. Um, uh, delighted for all the footage that you've taken i hope that you've seen uh, and enjoyed this little little interlude into into paul's bird room and as i say hopefully once lockdown passes we'll be able to go and see paul uh, in the flesh um coming up now we've got our very own bird of the week So first bird up this week is a uh, one of our dark, um, heavily variegated yellow cocks. Now, pretty sure this is a cock bird. Depth of colour would suggest that it is. Um, what I what I like about the bird immediately is that rise on the back and that cut in the neck. Um, it's it, its position's not great on this shot at the moment. Um, it can get up and it, it starts to now, and you can see. Once it starts to show itself, it's a um, it's it's a very nice bird. This bird was um, was bred out of the uh, the father daughter pairing, uh, and one of the things um, that I like about it, it's one of two birds from that nest. really like this bird um it, it's got a lot of early quality uh, far you know it's still in nest feather so far too soon to tell what it's going to end up like but um as it as it reaches up and as it's got that that sort of better position it's, it's really sort of starting to show itself so it will be a bird that i um that i single off at some stage over the weeks ahead uh it's certainly one that will make the first selection um, and we'll keep an eye out on it uh, over the weeks and months ahead. So our first bird of the week is a heavily variegated yellow fife cock. This is uh, one of our first round borders. And I think immediately, I mean, I've left the, the perches in as fife perches. Uh, I do have border perches, so they are only five spars apart. Um, I think this is a hen. Uh, I'm not 100% certain. 
um, one of the things you see immediately is the, the difference in size. Now, I know the borders that I've got are, are not the biggest borders in the world, uh, but what I do think they've got is some, um, is some shape uh, and some nice shape. And you can see nice position on this bird. Um, she's, she's just breaking into the malt. Uh, so um, she's by no means, you know, anywhere near finished and, and she'll still have some size to come on her. Uh, but a nice bird, but in comparison to the five that we've just seen, positively huge. Um, the, the borders have been uh, a real, a real delight in the shed this year. I thought they were going to give me a lot more problems so far than they have. That's just put the mockers on them, hasn't it? Um, but our, our second bird of the week, a three parts dark border canary. Let's see how she turns out in the months ahead. One of the things that I have done uh, slightly differently this year in the canary room has been the addition of pearl morbide. Um, now, it, it is by no means a new product. Uh, it's been on the market for uh, a number of years. I know some fanciers have, have used it and then uh, disregarded it. Um, I have used it for the first time this year and I am um, pretty convinced by it to be honest, uh, particularly as a as a rearing and weaning food, um, as we can see here, you know, as I, as I pop it on the, the cages where there's young in the nest, um, the hens go straight to it. As I pop it on the cages where there are young away, the, those young will start to, to feed on it readily. Uh, and the young that are away um, in their flight cages are, um, you know, are, are really tucking into it. Uh, one of the birds that has really enjoyed it has been the borders behind me. Um, we've just seen uh, one of the first round borders. Um, and we have a look at all the birds here in the cage enjoying the pearl morbide. Um, and then the, the second round were due to hatch. Uh, I think we had six full eggs last time we were on the show. Five of them have hatched, five of them have been wrong, and one of them's a little bit behind, but uh, but they seem to be growing really well, and the, the parents, uh, again, you know, um, finding some wood to touch, uh, are doing a really good job um, feeding these young, and... Uh, and that's, that's been lovely to see. Uh, it's been one of the real highlights of the canary room for me this year. Um, it's just how well the borders have done. So I've, um, as I say, there's four away, uh, two clears, um, a variegated and a, and a three parts dark. And then in the nest, there looks like there's another clear uh, and another dark and then three more variegated. Um, still a long way to go for them, uh, but they're, they're there and and you know, and, and and I like the, I like the look of of what I see so far with the borders. Um, you know, be be beautiful birds. You know, my friend Graham Holdsworth is uh, he's a few weeks behind me in terms of the season, but he seems to be doing well with his birds as well. So, um, you know, between the, the the two of us, these birds will sort of go backwards and uh, and forwards and. Um, maybe look to, to keep a couple of pairs of borders next year. I think that's that's really one of the challenges for me in the canary room. Um, I've got some uh, some red, black, grey wings uh, that I've got my eye on. Um, uh, I'd like to get some Norwich um, sorted uh, to get a couple of pairs of Norwich on the go. Um, the Agat mosaics have have done uh, really well for me this year. Um, they've been invaluable actually. Um, with with rearing uh, stragglers uh, as well. So the Agat mosaics have done well. I've got um, five that I've wrong. Um, I think there's another three in the nest up there with the uh, with the the single hen. Um, I say I think because um, there were uh, the blue nest, uh, the second blue nest which we saw earlier with the, the two allies in it. Uh, there were five chicks in there originally. Um, and what I did was uh, I moved them to um, another nest. I moved them to the, the mother of the, the bird of the week five that we've just seen. 
our best dark hen. Uh, she'd been paired back to her father um, and bred two for me in the first round. And um, so I moved this bird there and, and I just didn't get a sense it was developing well under her. So, so I moved it again under the agat. Um, and at one stage she had six in the nest. Um, uh, we'll, more on that a little bit later on. Um, two, two of them haven't made it, uh, and that's you know going to happen. Uh, she's got four in there at the moment, um, so she's done. Uh, you know she's done a good job, and and that's really a, an interlude now into our um, to our next section of the show, which would be to catch up with our dark birds. So <laughs> our dark line is. Um, is made up of a father and two sons, uh, a very good buff cock um, as a father, a son uh, who's a buff cock and a son who's a yellow cock. And we've got young off all of them, um, which is really encouraging. Um, it's been uh, it's been an interesting uh, time, to be honest, with the darks. We've got sort of, you know, five away early on, relatively early on. They were one of the first birds we took away. Um, and they were enjoying baths yesterday, as were all of the the birds that are that are took away. So the the young fifes and, and the young borders. I, I put the baths on all of the birds, and I do that once a week as part of the, the sort of cleaning process, getting them through the molt successfully. Um, so I decided to run the buff cock with one of the other green yellow hens, uh, who who was down for a blue to start with, uh, but I, I ran the the dark buff cock over um, off her and there's three young there in the nest which look nice so I'm going to pair him back to her again um, and, the, and the reason I've done that is he she is unrelated um, to him she's actually out of the uh, a variegated yellow cock from the um, the the main birds in the in the clear line or, or variegated line and the the hen that we that we saw feeding the blue chicks um so i thought that's that there's there's no relation there and, and as i say there's three nice chicks on away so uh, i'm looking forward to seeing how they develop over the the, the weeks ahead um i've got um three chicks from the uh the yellow cock um, and I've got three chicks from the buff cock, uh, the, the younger two, his sons. Um, and you'll know, remember in the last episode, we, we used a light bulb to, to make the nest up. Well, those four eggs that we set, they hatched. Um, they're out of the, the young yellow cock, uh, dark yellow cock. Um, one, of them's, uh, one of them's not made it after a couple of days, but there's three still in the nest. Very, very babies, really. Uh, but they're still being fed by their mum. Um, so the the darks, uh, the hen behind me, who again is, is bred out of the heavily variegated buff hen and the variegated uh, yellow cock, um, she has three, uh, four, four young in the nest. One of them's not hers, um, but but three dark birds, and, and I've left them together as a pair. So we'll get another round out of them. And, and what that means really is that um, I've ran father to daughter, which is close. It's very very close. And um, what I wanted to do was bring in some completely unrelated blood. Um, to put back in that line over the next couple of years. So very much when you're building family lines of birds, that's what you've, you've got to think about. You've got to think about, um, you know, it's, it's great having lots of related birds, but, but very quickly, um, you know, you bring all of the faults to the, to the fore, which is, which, you know, is part of the reason you line breed, to see what faults behind them uh, and inbreed. Um, so what I want to do with those birds is, is just, um, you know, have something for next year in the year after um, developing to the side so so the way things are looking at the moment is that the all four of the lines will be related so there's almost two clear lines going on at the moment the um, the heavily variegated buff hen has produced some dark birds in the second round for us she produced a couple of light birds in the first round I've mated her up again uh, so we'll take a third round I, I said I wouldn't let her sit but she's in great shape so I may well let her sit um, for that round so dark birds coming out okay it's been a strange couple of weeks with the clear line um so 
uh, this next bit of footage you might find a little bit distressing so uh, I'll give you a warning of that um, initially so uh, a variegated yellow hen uh, hatched um, three chicks out of uh, the clear buff uh, pop and then um, seemed to be feeding them okay I was pleased because it was the first chicks I got from her and uh, I looked at the nest I checked the nests every day um, and I checked the nest and uh, one of the young um, one of the young was dead uh, one of the young's wing tips and feet had been pecked off uh, there was a final young in there which I which I scooped up and moved uh, and that had the edge of its wings sort of taken and um, I've never seen that with a fife before um, really quite distressing and it had been a uh, on top of a real funny week in the bird room uh, and I don't know whether you know the wind whether uh, I don't know what what's happened whether the change in in in, in climate or, or whatever but but something just wasn't right and um, behind me here I've got a, a series of the, the clear buff hens and I'd ran them all with the, the clear yellow cock who is just in the cage back here you might be able to see him um, and they'd all hatched young um, and then they'd all sort of what one um, I'd rung them uh, I'd, I, I'd rung them and they just weren't developing um, now I have got young I've got as we know now five sort of clear lightly marked buff hens all bred the same way um, they'd all they've all hatched young now from that specific cock the mortality rate was really high now he's a new bird into the shed um, mortality rate's really really high so I've used the other the older clear yellow cock the, the red ring one um, and I've mated him up with all with all of them now uh, as well so high mortality rate I've moved one of the clears um, under the agats and, and thankfully they're feeding that but as we can see in the footage here you know uh, sort of 15 16 days it, it looked like a, a seven or eight year old day chick and and, and that's no good. Um, I've moved uh, a couple of the dark chicks that were with the really good hen and her father. I've moved those under clears uh, and they seem to be feeding themselves. But it's not been all bad news in the clears. Um, our, uh, our older the clear yellow hen, the hen with no ring, um, she's got three chicks now that have uh, that have just left the nest today. Um, I'm going to put a nest pan in. It was one of the nest pans that... Um, I was given by by Shane um, so, so I'm going to hook that onto the front of the cage in a second you see that um, and the the other clears are sort of steady away um, I've got a couple more clears or lightning marked birds that I've set down on eggs I've got one clear that has um, not laid any eggs yet um, and that's um, strange she's built a nest she's been mated but she hasn't laid but I'm, I'm just gonna leave her she may well lay what I have noticed with them is they've all been quite slow to go down for the second round so normally they're laying eggs as you've still got young there hasn't happened hasn't happened and I can't put my finger on why um so I've uh, I've looked at that um but there's some nice chicks nice looking chicks nice selection of clears we took a number of clears away uh, last time out uh, so we said we'd leave them another 48 hours after the show we took them away and you, you, you get to see them here as we take them away and then now is a, a couple of weeks later so so they're developing quite nicely and um, the old hen the orange ring hen she hatched three of her eggs and she's feeding them I've popped a dark in there as well um, and, and believe it or not the mysterious hen who laid eggs off perches has again perseverance has paid dividends she's laid a third egg today in a nest so we'll keep all our fingers crossed that they're full uh, we'll see but that's uh, that's a good sign We've got a couple of other hens building up and and really that that's it with the the various different lines um, most of the hens now have either you know laid their second round or, or are about to lay the second round uh, the end of May you know we'll look into June at, at what's next for them 
Um, there's a couple of hens that I'd like. I'd like to get another round out of the, the, the no ring hen if I can. Um, we'll see. Um, a couple of other hens I'd like to get um, young out of, a round out of. Um, I don't know, there's maybe 55, 60 young fifes at various different ages um, in the canary room at the moment. So, you know, there's plenty to, to select from from next year. And, and that's the important thing. You know, I, I, I breed first and foremost for to, to move the stud forward and to maintain my own um, sort of quality of birds moving forward. Uh, there will be surplus inevitably um, that leaves the shed. Um, and so we'll we'll do you know in episodes to come we'll do the the selection process and I, and I'll talk you through you know the criteria that, that that I put on birds to to ensure whether they get to to stay or not. Um, what I've already started to do is mull around the sort of you know the cocks that I'm going to keep for next year, uh, and then mull around the sort of hens that I know I'd like to keep for next year. Um, I'm looking at a, a ratio of about two to one, so um, two hens to every cock. So, you know, I think we've got ten five cocks in the shed at the moment. Not all of those will be retained. Um, uh, you know, a core, a core number will, and then I'll look to retain the sons of those birds moving forward. Um, so, yeah, strange couple of weeks with the clears. Uh, lost a few um, that are drunk, which is, you know, which is always always upsetting um, you know big old unit like me still gets upset when I when I lose a bird so um, but it's the highs and lows of bird keeping and, and the one thing I've always tried to do with the canary room is make it an honest assessment of um, of canary keeping you know any of you viewers who've seen previous seasons will know season one of the Canary Room was disastrous. And, um, you know, we've had some good seasons, we've had some bad seasons. It's just the way it works in this hobby. Uh, and that makes it even more sweeter when you do get really, really, really lovely results. Um, that time of the show now. And we're ready for question time. So thank you to everybody for getting in touch with the show through uh, Facebook, through our YouTube channel. I do try and answer all the questions uh, that I do get on the various different channels. So question time today. First question comes from um, Graham Parker. Hi, Matt. What colour pairing would you put with a fawn fife? Um, great question, Graham. Um, what we've got to, to remember is what a fawn fife is. So it's basically cinnamon on a white ground bird um, so you know we're trying we're trying and failing to breed them in the canary room this year uh, I saw some great examples of them last year uh, Tony Abbott um, had a, a stunning bird that he benched at the north of England and um, Gerald and we know when we, we visit Gerald uh, had a couple of really really nice form hens uh, one of which I still hope to acquire um, so I, I there's no really right or wrong answer to this. What you want to understand is the feather type. So whites are also yellow and buff. Now with white and fawn, um, so with white allied to white and cinnamon, I would be inclined to look for a buff bird because you, you know visual uh, cinnamon gives the 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 sort of the the visual impact of, of the feathers being a little bit. Um, uh, uh, sort of uh, narrower um, so I would look for a, for a buff bird of, of some description as a general rule uh, and it is only a general rule um, Graham I uh, I like to breed whites with clear birds and blues with dark birds um, but it is general you, you'll notice this year I, I attempted to run uh, the variegated white bird I've got with, with a dark bird uh, uh, and I have done actually um, so we'll see what comes out of that I'm expecting more blues to come out of that um, so I hope um, I hope that answers your question, Graham. Our next question comes in from Robert Elkin. Cheers, Rob. Uh, how long after weaning do you keep your young on it? Egg food, and also, uh, how do we come to this different shape five big body, small head? Thanks. Well, the first question is relatively easy. The second question is slightly more contentious, Rob. Thank you. Um, so the the uh, the answer is. Uh, I continue to make egg food um, right the way through uh, until the molt. 
Um, so uh, I will probably stop feeding it around September time. Um, what I what I do do though, um, and what I have done now is about six to eight weeks. Uh, when the fives are about six to eight weeks, I'm giving them um, one lot of egg food a day rather than three lots. Uh, so. Um, I'm cleaning out all of the, the sort of stale food and I'm, and I'm giving them one big fill um, of egg food rather than three lots, whereas the other birds in the room, uh, the, the ones with sort of chicks that have just fledged or uh, chicks still in the nest, I'm giving them egg food three times a day. So first thing in the morning, with um, I'm giving with some... Um, some pearl morbide then uh, again at lunchtime and i'll put the green food in at lunchtime as well and then again uh just before the the an hour, about an hour or so before the lights go out and again i'll give them another feed of pearl, pearl morbide then second question um rob how did we come uh to the different shape five big body small head um wow uh I guess the um, the thing with that is we've seen lots of different shapes and sizes of fifes. Uh, we see different fifes in the continent. They are generally uh, a little bit like myself, a little bit more fuller in the front. Um, the the standard uh, fife is um, is you know is is a, is a jaunty um, bird with with as much on the back as it's got on the front. Uh, in fact, more on the back optimally. Um, what has happened is, you know, people have put uh, increasing amounts of feather on the bird uh, to try and, you know, keep the shape on the show bench. Um, I've seen it, you know, s several years ago. I think it's less prevalent now on the show bench, but there was some really big unit birds um, out there. Uh, and, you know, and they've had a, a degree of success. And, and when, you know, p people will will breed birds that are, that are winning. But I think for me... Part of it is because, um, you know, those birds generally hold their shape more. Um, they're not something that I'm particularly attracted to. Uh, and certainly if I was a judge, you know, they, they can give the the the, um, the thing of being a, a slightly oversized. Um, questions from uh, Debbie. Um, Debbie Stout, one of our fans. Uh, my opinions on salt and sugar in soft food. Um, well, uh, I've never heard of salt, I have to say, Debbie. I have heard of people putting glucose, so pure sugar, in um, in soft food, particularly in borders, to put size on them. Really comes back to what Rob said, you know, just in, in, in cert certainly fives, we, we want them to be as small as possible, so I wouldn't I wouldn't personally put any, any sugar in there. Um, salt, I'd, I'd be a little bit anxious about, um, if I'm truly honest. I think... Um, I've uh, I, I do put um, uh, seaweed in granulated seaweed. That's you know it's going to have some element of of salt in it, I guess, given given that it's from the sea. Um, but I uh, I wouldn't um, I, I certainly don't add sugar and I wouldn't add um, uh, salt. But that is just my own sort of preference. Um, the uh, the other points that you make, Debbie. Um, you know, fantastic contributions and absolutely they will be covered off um, in later shows in terms of the, the selection process. Um, another question uh, from um, Kieran Pearson. Um, I have a lot of clear eggs this year. Any advice on this? I only really keep bonded pairs, but still so many clear eggs. Not sure what I'm doing wrong. It's only the canaries as well. All the other birds are fine. I think, Kieran, um, um, you know, we, we naturally... Uh, we'll look at what we've done wrong. Um, I had it last year in the canary room um, where I decided to run a number of pairs just because um, my work commitments at the time meant that I was I was going to be out um, quite a bit and, and you know pairs are generally. Uh, easier to, to look after you know once you sort of set a pair up you're, you're away um, all I can suggest is you split the birds up um, you uh, put baths on them uh, you know bath is a great conditioner um, you give them a little bit of time apart um, and you go again um, there can be and I certainly found this last year there was almost like a complacency had set in amongst the pairs which sounds like a really strange thing to say um, 
<laughs> but it, it was, it was almost like a complacency and, you know, pairs that I'd just left together, I thought should just, you know, crack on, but didn't. Um, this year, I've only got one pair of fights together. Um, and, you know, where where we've seen that with the greens, that's worked well. Um, I've got the, the cinnamon yellow five foot that I've ran in with a number of hens. He's with one hen just on his own at the moment, and that hasn't worked, and he's been with her all the time. So give him a bit of distance uh, would be my advice, Kieran, and, and see how you get on. Very, very best of luck with that, mate. Um, and our final question. It actually came in for the, uh, the previous episode, but it was just a little bit late in the day. Um, it's from Sean Byrne. So Sean says, uh, what is the best colour to pair? What are the main colours that will be more common to breed within the Fife breed? What colours would be a no-no? And if you had certain colour birds but wanted to hold that bird's colour, what birds is best to pair it back to? If I had a green Fife and had no more greens, what would be the best bird to pair to? Cheers, thanks. Only, uh, hope all makes sense, only just starting out with Fifes. Uh, it does make sense, Sean. Um, so the no-nos are... Um, are really whites to whites, um, allied to whites to allied to whites. So that's a white, a fawn, um, you know, uh, a blue together. Um, and there is a there is a, a sort of a feeling amongst five keepers that um, there is a there is a genetic weakness in the white. And actually, pairing a white and white together will increase the mortality rate in youngsters. Um, the other thing is to say in fives is everything else goes. Um, the fife is a type canary first and foremost. So the one thing that you want to make sure is that your pairs, irregardless of colour, are matched from a type perspective. Um, so they fit the type of the model, um, the Fife model. One of the things about the Federation Journal, which is fantastic, is it has the Fife model and the, the, the description of points in its very first few pages. Um, so there's no such thing as a no-no. Um, what you will generally find, though, that said, is that people uh, breed uh, clear birds together to breed clears, and they breed dark birds together to breed darks. What I would say is um, when, in, in, in my experience, when I've paired clears together for a number of years, they have a tendency of going a little bit long looking. Um, now, it might be just a perception thing, but they have a tendency of going long. So what I will do every few years is drop a short green bird in there. Um, now that can change the color uh, as well of the birds a little bit, but it should retain the type. Um, I would do blues in, in, into dark birds and, and whites into light birds. Um, I have done this year cinnamon to cinnamon. Uh, generally speaking, I'd do a cinnamon cock to a, um, a visual, um, a non-visual hen, sorry. Um, uh, or alternatively, I would do a, um, a carrier cock to uh, a, a cinnamon hen. That's that's generally my favourite pairing with cinnamons. But as I'm on year one with a cinnamon line this year, I've paired a, a visual cock over a visual hen. Um, that's not a no-no by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but it's not something I would normally do. Um, hope that answers the question, Sean. Thanks very much for getting in touch with the show. And there we have it, the end of episode 10. Um, I hope you have uh, enjoyed the show. If you have, give us a thumbs up. Um, if you've got any comments, pop them on the channel below. Thank you very much indeed. We've reached our milestone of 6,000 subscribers, which I was absolutely delighted with. Um, thank you also to Budgie Planet for sharing some of the content, uh, and I will be sharing some of theirs so we can see what goes on uh, in the Budgie world. Um, I'm sure next time there'll be more highs and lows, or in the case of the Red Poles, lows and disasters. Until next time, everyone, take care.